Hey guys, Steve here from Kirby Bike. Just thought I'd go through some of the most common asked questions today regarding will a DIY e-bike kit fit my bike and the most common problems that I've seen to come over time and time again. Let's get started with fitment first of all. The most common question we get asked is will a DIY e-bike kit fit my bike? Now that's not a question we can go through every single email we get. We get literally hundreds of emails a month. We can't check so that's why we've got a DIY conversion guide on our website but this video is going to go into a little bit more detail on that today hopefully a bit more helpful um, the number one thing I would check first is do you have competent DIY skills because if you struggle to change a puncher and you expect to be able to easily convert a normal bike into an electric bike then you're going to come into a world of problems now we've got technical support on hand to help with um, issues that may arise from defects but we, we can't really kind of babysit people through every single step of fitting a kit if you're not, you know, mechanically competent at doing so. So first up, the first thing you want to check is what power kit do you want to buy? You know, the standard law for road use in the UK is 250 watts. It may or may not change in the future. Could be different for other parts in the world. Um, when thinking about the power of the kit, you've got to think about legalities of riding, whether you're on or off road ride away what kind of riding you're doing are you just pooting around town um you know is it quite flat where you live are there big hills do you weigh quite a lot um these are all things that you want to consider when considering the power you know what what power we do everything from 250 watts up to 2000 watts even 5000 watt wheels or more of a kind of e-motorbike kit so yeah once you've got once you've got your power decided then you want to make sure you're choosing the correct wheel size for your kit there's drop down menus on the Kirby bike site from anything from 20 inch wheel up to 29 inch wheel so that should cover all bases and the most common sizes the next thing you want to check is the dropouts on the on the rear of the bike um, for the rear wheel some of the common carbon bikes have got like closed hole dropouts I don't, I don't know what the technical name is where the spindle fits through a closed hole you're not going to be able to convert like a carbon bike with that style dropouts most aluminium and steel bikes have got open dropouts but just double check that before buying a kit okay right another very important thing that you want to check is how much room is there in the in the frame triangle to fit the battery and usually the controller and cables as well it's um some of the modern bikes have quite a slanted um top tube which makes there less room in the frame triangle also, it's going to depend on whether you've got a small, medium, large or extra large frame. You can get the same model of bike and a size small frame is obviously going to have less room in the frame triangle as a, as a large or extra large, so bear that in mind. I'll put up the dimensions now on the, on the screen of the standard Kirby bike 2000 watt kit, the battery, so you'll be able to pause this video and get the dimensions to check against your own frame triangle. But bear in mind, you're also probably going to have to fit a controller depending on the kit. That you buy it because the 2000 watt kit has an external um, controller you're also going to want to check the amount of gears you've got on the rear cassette um, they can be anything from six or seven speed up to ten or twelve the standard kits on um, on the kirby bike site come with seven speed and we do an upgrade version with nine speed so if you order the nine speed upgrades you will receive the electric hub wheel with the nine speed already installed so You've got options there for 7 or 9 speed. If you've got maybe an 8 speed bike or a 10 speed bike, we'd recommend ordering the standard 7 speed and taking the wheel to a local bike shop and getting them to change a cassette, which they should easily be able to do for you for a, you know an additional cost of not too much money. I would strongly advise anyone installing a kit greater than 250 watts of making sure your bike has either already got hydraulic disc brakes or you order the hydraulic disc brake upgrades from the Kirby bike site. Alright guys, so now common issues that I come across quite frequently. This is from working with Andy for a year or so, seeing the most common issues that come up. Number one, again, poor DIY skills. Um, no surprise there. If we're getting people that don't really know how to use a spanner and they're emailing us saying that their back wheel's fallen off, Goes without saying, doesn't it? You know, like you make sure it's seated properly in the drop pouch, you make sure you fit it to torque 
converter at least one properly you know these these are common things you know if there's something going wrong like this like your wheels dropping out probably get someone else to fit it is my best advice on that um number two is people expecting everything to just work with no effort um DIY e-bike kits are exactly that they're DIY they're not made specifically to fit every single bike perfectly some of the batteries are going to be tighter some of the wheels are going to be a, a bit more fiddly expect to have some issues with every single kit you fit and I don't mean that in a bad way you're going to need to check your your spacing with your spaces on your back wheel on every kit you fit if you don't fit any spaces or fit them wrong you know your back cassette's just going to rub on the dropouts if you fit too many it's not going to fit if you don't fit enough you're going to have wires rubbing you know you, you're really going to have to just fettle with things and that is completely normal with DIY e-bike kits and if you're not if you're not down for doing that then I suggest don't do DIY e-bikes because it is a case of hit and miss you know right the number one problem I get I mean don't really see any issues with rear hub electric wheels so really honestly I don't think I've ever seen a single returned hub wheel um, in in the year or so that I've been working alongside Andy um, what I've got with me here is a brand new battery let's turn it around to the switch now I'll get some people messaging once in the blue moon saying that they're getting no power um, where is it the, the electric voltmeters nothing nothing coming from it let's switch this on right see that there Right, it's lighting up fine. Sometimes you'll get people saying, oh, I've charged my battery and it's not working and this, this isn't lighting up and it's not doing anything. If the bike's doing something really weird with electrics, I would say eight times out of 10, occasionally it's this switch being sensitive, okay? This is more common than people to think. Whenever I tell people, they don't believe me. Right, I've, I've, let me show you. All you need to do, the most common problem I've seen is get some of this, it doesn't have to be this brand, I don't know if you can see that. Electrical contact cleaner, I think it's isopropyl spray. If you get a contact cleaner, you can get that from Halfords or anywhere. Get a microfiber cloth here, put it under the switch so you don't get, see this, Let's see if you can see this here. Normally if I've got two hands free and this is bolted to a bike, I wouldn't have to worry about this, but I'm, I'm just going to do this because I've only got two hands free. Spray around the on off switch. Yeah. Get your cloth. Make sure you protect your paintwork with your microfiber. And just work that into the on off switch. Okay. And again, do it a couple of times. Make sure you can see that. Sorry, this is really awkward trying to do it from this angle, but I think you get the idea. Yeah, on off switch, work it around in circles. That, believe it or not, will solve probably eight out of 10 major electrical problems. It doesn't cost a lot. It's probably under a tenner to grab a bottle of this. It's always a good thing to have. If you are having weird electric issues on these kits, Sometimes they're very sensitive to a bit of dust if they've been sitting about for a long time. We often get people having this problem if their bike's been sitting unused for two or three months. Um, give that a try. It's a really awesome tip. The second biggest issue that I see, um, there's very few issues. I mean, these are not common, but when we do get a problem, we find it's either one of two things most common. One is that battery problem. Secondly, it's controllers overheating. Now, a lot of people say, well, why should they overheat, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, people just jump on these DIY conversions and ride them hard. I mean, like hard. They send them up hills full power. They put them under a load of stress and just expect there you know, to not be any issues. Now, you've got, you've got to stop every now and then, check how hot things are getting, you know. So the biggest problem is controllers overheating. Now, they do come in a bag, but we have found that fitting them externally to the bag works better a lot of people are going to say oh but yeah it comes with a bag but it doesn't matter the box is using the enclosed metal box and the airflow is way better you know it's sealed it is going to it is far less likely to encounter any problems if you install the controller directly on top of the battery 
or external to a bag. You can put it in a bag, but I would advise checking maybe every 20, 30 minutes just to see how your conversion works. If it's not getting any airflow, it's extremely common for the um, controller to overheat. So make sure you check that, guys. The other thing I would mention with conversions after they've been done is the amount of people that don't even care for the conversions whatsoever. I've seen people sending it flat out through literally just like a swamp covered in mud and water and saying, oh yeah, but it should be all right. No, it's, it's not, you know. The kits are probably fine for riding in a little bit of rain, but you can't you can't take you know the piss with it. You can't you can't go driving it through. You know it's not an amphibious vehicle. It's it's a you know it's an e-bike. Um, you've got to be sensible with these things. Don't ride it until the battery goes a hundred percent flat until it literally dies. That's not healthy for a battery. You know ride it down till it's maybe one bar, then charge it up again. Um, it's a sensible way to do it to prolong the battery life. Check things are not overheating. Keep an eye on it and care for your bike because you put a lot of money into it and you can't expect just because you spent a lot of money that it should be up to anything and be bulletproof, waterproof. And, you know, it's, it's ridiculous to presume it can handle absolutely anything. The kits are really robust. We, we use them, get very little problems. But if you, if you just abide by some of the things I mentioned in this video, then we think you have literally years of trouble-free riding. So yeah, good luck with that. Probably one of the most common questions that we get asked is why have I received my e-bike kit but the battery didn't come? The rules and regulations for shipping batteries are completely different to other objects. Um, they always have to be shipped separate. It's completely normal. So if you do order a DIY e-bike kit from Kirby Bike, expect to receive the controller wheel, all the rest of the parts, and the battery to arrive within you know a couple of days up to a week ahead unfortunately it's normal um, batteries have different regulations for shipping probably different import um, rules regarding sending batteries um, as anyone knows who's got an aeroplane with anything with batteries there's definitely different rules involved around batteries so this is a reason for you know them shipping separately so don't panic, it's totally normal, you will get your battery, just um, should receive it within a day or two up to a week later, but it will arrive. And the last thing I wanted to mention is anyone, any customers of Kirby Bike having any difficulties, please email directly through Kirby Bike. This is my personal channel, so I won't be answering customer support questions for Kirby Bike because that's not my job on my channel, um, this is my personal channel, um, but any problems, Send shoot Kirby bike uh, email regarding with your order number. But other than that, I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Good luck. Speak to you soon.